YouTubers! Mike Martins here with the Mike Martins channel. Vancouver should bid for the 2030 Olympics. Former Vanco, Van Oak CEO. That's a uh, Vancouver Olympic Committee or something? All right, let's figure this out, guys. The former CEO of Vancouver 2010 Winter Games organized a committee says, now it's time for Vancouver to seriously consider a bid for the 2030 Olympics. Furlong is set to outline the vision of the 2030 Olympic bid in a speech to the Greater Vancouver Board of Trade on Thursday. That's today, guys. Thank you guys a happy Thursday, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. And I got a few little tidbits of other cities that have hosted the Olympics and what has happened. Um, even if it's so carefully planned out in a T, all the dots are dotted and the T's are crossed and periods and punctuation is perfectly laid out. Is it still... Could, no, is it still... Can it become profitable? That's the right question to ask. Vancouver 2010 games were widely considered to be a success. He says, and he believes the 2030 bid would have the support of the Canadian Olympic Committee, the International Olympic Committee, and the general public. I think uh, what's really special about Vancouver is that we have a very powerful legacy for the games, for long told Global News. We don't have this uh, the city that's uh, annoyed or out or angry or felt betrayed by, by what took place in 2010. And we have these wonderful venues. We have the admiration of the world and we have a reputation with the IOC that's pretty well stellar. So you think about all, you think, think about all of what, all that and it's almost start, uh, staring at you in the face that this is an opportunity. Sorry, guys, I just woke up. So I just got to the shop. Furlong says that the next step is to, to, to talk to various levels of government about what an Olympic bid might look like. The provincial government says it's, it's far too early to discuss what sort of financial support the province would provide. So this is a bid for, this is, this is pretty long. So this is for the 2026, is it the 2026? 2030. Winter Olympics. So this is way down the road, folks. So they're, this is how they do. They kind of bring it out in discussion, then return to it a few times, then kind of discuss and tinker around with it, and then actually it actually comes in. That's how it starts. It starts with the discussion. Now, the problem, let me tell you about the Olympics when I was in 2010 in Vancouver. I was 2010 in Vancouver, and I owned a store in a mall right a block and a half away from the two major venues, BC Place and the the where the Canucks play uh, air camp. I don't know what's what it's called now. So there's two major venues there, right? So uh, and where the BC Lions play is that where BC plays, right? So I, I I was a block and a half away my store, and what happened was they they gridded off in huge fencing. They erected huge fencing, uh, portable fencing, but huge. You just can't scale it around the sky train in the area so people couldn't go in the mall was just completely like a no go zone so people that were coming to the store not from the olympics because i didn't get no olympic traffic in my store at all i think i had one or two people wanting to use the phone and if i, ha if I could give them free internet and I, I couldn't remember what it was and people coming saying that we're here for the olympics and i'm like okay and they're like um could we use your phone or could we use your internet, right? So that, that's all I really got or if I had a bathroom. But that's about it. But I didn't get a lot of people. So what happened was they actually gridded off the entire area. So the, the mall was like a no-go. That whole section of the town was pretty much a no-go zone. So people were like like pretty much like kind of pre-shown where to go with the gridded fencing. So you couldn't scale it. it was I think it was like 11 or 13 feet high. And it had these two two big legs at the bottom, so you couldn't. So people would have to walk around where to go from the sky train or this, the train system, and and avoid uh, getting into the the actual downtown grid of the city. So that's what would ha That's what happened with me and what I saw when I was there. And uh, I heard the venues were cool. They had different uh, venues and different places uh, uh, over by BC Place, and they had a lot of music, a lot of festive activities. Lots of, they said the tourism was pretty jammed. Uh, all in all, I, I didn't hear anything like super negative about it. You know, I didn't really, I really honestly wholeheartedly didn't hear nothing super negative about it. But the whole gridding of the SkyTrain was, I think that was pretty, pretty bad for business for me because people that actually wanted to come to my store had a really tough time during, during games. 
to get through the gridding. So they had to reroute and get through different different areas of town just to get to my business, right? So that was a little bit of a problem for me, right? So let's look at and see what these things cost, man. There it is. There it is. Here it is. So they're bidding, right? Here it is. The 40-year hangover, how the 1976 Olympics nearly broke Montreal. So they were promoting this. The uh, The Montreal Olympics left the city with a $1.6 billion debt, a string of corruption scandals, and creeping sense of economic and social decline. 40 years on, how did the, the city survive? Well, this goes on into, it's a really long story, and it goes into how the city basically tried its best to pay off its Olympic bid, pay off its uh, debtors, and uh, the corruption that was, um, you know, here it is. Uh, the 1970 estimate was that the games would cost 120 million, uh, 65 million euros in total, with 71 million budgeted for the Olympic Stadium itself. Uh, they took a personal hand in the stadium's design, and let's see what it costs. What it went over. Let's see if it goes here. Yeah, the luxurious chalet costing 100. And, nah, that's not important. Uh, I just want to see what uh, uh, it says here watch this when 22 African nations refused to participate wow so there it is so well let's just go with this what it says here okay 1.6 billion it ended up costing them now uh, here's what hosting the Olympics games will do to taxes, according to an economist. So, right here, uh, forty percent, forty-six percent of respondents to Calgary's online Olympic poll deleted uh, poll deleted due to pro bid bot activity. So here it is. Government of Canada gets one. I guess uh, tallying up the numbers so far. Here's how much public cash the games will gobble up. So this is what it would cost. Government of Canada, $1.45 billion. Province of Alberta, $700 million. City of Calgary, $390 million, plus $150 million credit for previous financial commitment to improve downtown district. That would be the game's hub. And uh, town of uh, Canmore, $3 million. So that's what it would cost. And this is the bid, the 2026 Olympic Games here in... In Calgary, so this is—I uh, don't know, guys. I mean, is it—is it a money maker? Does it realistically, if you could, we, they could prove that the money would be in the hands of the of the workers, not the people working at the venues. I'm talking about the people that are working businesses locally, hotels. Like, if there was a way they could actually show that and prove that, I think it would make the Olympics more attractive. I don't know, man. I'm not like a coordinator or business coordinator when it comes to organizing these kind of things. But all I could tell you for me was it, it was it was kind of a letdown for me in my opinion, right? And Wikipedia, our friends over at Wikipedia, gave us a basic cost of the Olympic Games. So starting out in Athens, I don't know what this is. I think this is the currency at the time, DPs. So it was three million seven hundred and forty thousand of that. Then we get back down to earth here during the Lon London Summer Olympics in 1908, and it costed uh, 394000 Then, you know, you got the Berlin Games here, uh, costed $30 million bucks. Then L London, 761 and 48 uh, pounds. Then you got the Munich Summer Olympics in 72, that was $1 billion, right? And keep going down, Moscow Olympic Games, 231 Two hundred thirty-one million U.S. and then U.S. one point three billion and the U.S. Okay, there's more. What's this second? Oh, total cost and then final operating budget. So it's broken down like that. So you got Barcelona back in nineteen ninety-two, nine point three billion. Let's move it down a bit. Uh, uh, Vancouver Winters, there it is. There, uh, two point three, uh, six point four billion. Uh, their total operating costs. Uh, Sochi, the Sochi Winter Olympics for 2014, 51 billion. There's nothing else there. It says 53 billion, and then Rio de Janeiro, 13 billion, and then so Korea, uh, South Korean Games, uh, 12 billion. So you see how the price spikes up astronomically, right? So now we already have already in line the Tokyo Summer Olympics in 2020, Beijing Winter Olympics 2022, Paris Summer Olympics 2024, Milan 
Croatia Winter Olympics 2026, and then Los Angeles Summer Olympics 2028. So it looks like for 2026, uh, Calgary did not get the bid. So it went to Mil uh, Milano. And then Los Angeles, Los, Los Angeles uh, 2028, looks like they got the bid. So it's kind of interesting eight years from now to see what happens with the Los Angeles Summer. I might even go there and cover it. My kids will be bigger and maybe go down for four or five days, maybe film some of the venues, what, what's going on, what people are thinking about, you know what I'm saying? And 2032 is up in the air. So what did they say here? 20, was it 2032 Olympic Games? 2030. So what is this telling me something else here? Uh, okay, 28. So they're missing the, the, the 30 for winter there. Okay, I I, I, I I understand what what they're what's going on here. Okay, so I wanted to throw that out there. Let me know what you guys think. Is the Olympics a moneymaker in your opinion? Does it do did it do well for you in, in other businesses or businesses you've had in the area? Did you did you go out and spend money in the uh, uh, to go see the games? I'd like to know. Comment below. I'm not trying to be negative. I'm not trying to be you know. I'm just trying to be non biased. I'm just giving my little tidbit of what happened. That whole fencing of the thing. They shouldn't have not done that. They should have put up signs to get to the SkyTrain and, and close off the entire uh, lower downtown east side of Vancouver because a lot of businesses did did have a, did have trouble. And then they also moved a lot of the people, the locals, uh, like homeless and stuff, they were shipped out to other towns from rumors that were uh, going around. A lot of people were shipped around. So I don't know, guys. Um, there is some pluses and negatives to this. But could it wholeheartedly turn a profit? Let me know. Comment below. Thanks for watching, guys.